Hello everybody and welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are going to be painting a watermelon slice today. Um, so you want to grab your supplies. The ones that I'm using as always are linked in the description. Um, and uh, the first thing we're going to do is just paint a basic triangular shape um, and just making sure that it's rounded at the bottom. And I'm just using a very light watered down pink to mimic almost a salmon color. And I'm, like I said, I'm painting a nice wide triangle that is uh, angled on the bottom. So it sort of looks like a cheese slice or a cheese wedge like that. Actually, I'm gonna make mine a little bit bigger. Okay, and now I'm going to darken that a little bit and I'm going to paint a dark line just on the left side here. And what we're doing is making our slice look 3D. So you don't really want it to blend too much. So just kind of lift off the paint there as best as you can. And while this area is still wet, so you do have to work quickly. I, I also have to work quickly because I'm not using uh, cotton paper. So um, my paper does dry a little bit quicker. You just kind of dab the surface in random areas and it should eventually bleed into this really natural looking watermelon uh, color and because watermelons are so watery um, they're very easy to paint with watercolor with a, a water-based medium um, so i'm just darkening the left side here that one stripe that we painted to make our watermelon look a little bit more 3d um, and I'm just kind of dotting random sections of my watermelon here as well as they dry. I'm going to make my watermelon just a little bit wider. The more I look at it, the more I feel like it should be a little wider. Now I'm also just very gently lining the right side. And again, just darken the areas that you think are appropriate to darken. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do here is just grab a, a very watered down lime green and we're going to line our watermelon slice with this stripe of green. Um, and this is the rind or the, I don't know what the actual term is for this. The, I think it's the rind. By the way, I have released a watermelon tutorial on my channel before, but it was two years ago. Um, so I decided that it would be fun to do sort of a real time version of it, but you're welcome to kind of look back in my first few videos and find that one there. So while that is uh, still wet, I'm just going to take darker green and you can either take darker green or you can just um, mix some black in with the green that you do have and again just like we did with the with the pink or the red uh, I'm lining just the outer portion here and I noticed um, that some of my red has blended again so I'm just going to quickly go back in and add a few other random blotches. Now the trick to making this border, this darker green stand out, is to paint 
half of it on the um, a piece of paper that has no watercolor on it yet because then it it's very pigmented and there's no water to spread it out. So if you're having trouble maintaining the intensity of that border, just kind of go a little bit more off of that uh, initial um, stripe that you painted earlier. The other thing we're going to do is every so often add this little um, dot, I guess, coming off of our rind. And this is just supposed to mimic those stripes that you see on watermelons. I think mine dried a little bit too quickly. So I'm just going to re-wet it. And you do want to leave a white gap between the pink and the green. Um, and you can see here I kind of prematurely blended them together and now the red is escaping on me. So that's easily mitigated. You just keep lifting off the bleeding uh, red. And I actually quite like how that looks. You just have to be very uh, quick to take that color off. And you can just keep going over all these little details over and over until you're happy with the intensity of the pigment and the contrasting colors. Um, so you can see I went over these guys uh, adding some more dots a couple of times. Again, this border over here. And I'm not quite satisfied with the intensity of this section yet, so I'm just going to add a little bit more green to my rind. And now we're just going to let this dry before we move on to the last step. So mine is almost completely dry. I'm, as always, a little bit impatient, but you're going to take a black watercolor and you're just going to very gently dab random areas wherever you want the, the black seeds of your watermelon to be. You don't even have to add the black seeds, they're completely optional, um, but I do think it adds a nice element of realism to your watermelon. And you know, as you can see, because mine is not completely dry yet, it is bleeding a little bit into the surrounding areas, but I'm okay with that because uh, Typically, when you cut open a watermelon, the seeds that you can see are still covered with a super thin layer of watermelon, but because watermelon is so watery and translucent, um, they, they are seen through, they're just not as intense. They're not super black because they're covered with that layer. So that's sort of what effect I'm going for, I suppose, uh, with using a slightly wet surface. And uh, that's about it. If you enjoyed this watermelon tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to check out some of my previous videos and I'll see you in the next one.